I have mentioned before about setting the steering wheel into the central position and if you haven't done it when you reverse into a stern mooring then it's a good idea to do it before you're leaving a stern on mooring because I mean for us here we're right on the end so it's not so much of a problem as we go out which you'll see in a minute it just we just take we just go to the right and it's not a problem because we're in the boat on that side but if you was in between two boats and you've still left your lock full lock on as you reversed in yesterday then you'll just go straight into one of the boats at the side um, so it's just worth straightening up finding that midpoint in the steering wheel before you set off there is a little bit of wind about so we've still got the same problem with the wind on the camera because I've now put the back on that's got the holes in it um, so you can hear more of the sounds but with the wind it does get on the camera so I will have to keep adjusting it um, and today's plan is that well I met up with Mary and Matt had a few beers with them in the Maltsters. <laughs> that was quite funny. And they've got their own boats and they're moored over in the Broad. And we're just heading over there now to meet up with them and follow them up to Roxham. There are a couple of interesting things happen on the way. Um, yeah, quite funny, some of them. And um, well, I'll watch the footage and see if I can come up with anything interesting to talk to you about. If not, there'll be a lot of music on.
Well, later on today, I met up with Matt and Mooney again at the Ferry Inn at Arning. And Matt asked me a question. He asked uh, me if I'd like to own my own boat. And I said, I'd love to, but we live that far away. It's not practical, really. Because it takes us four and a half hours. Well, it's a four hour drive without a stop. It takes us four and a half hours. It's not something I'd want to be doing every weekend, setting off Friday after work uh, and then going back Sunday. Um, so, now I've had a question also off Bob about why don't I do a feature about syndicate ownership. And I may well do that in a later video, but I, I think it is for a later video. Um, because there's a lot to that that um, needs to be discussed really. Uh, so, the, well, basically the syndicate ownership is great for us because we get in four weeks a year, one in each season, and that's great because we're having four holidays, but like, um, like I was saying to Matt, I wouldn't be able to get down every weekend, um, and as far as living on a boat, I don't think I could do that. I do like to have a little bit of creature comforts now and again, a um, bit of central heating and things, because it can get chilly on those boats. I know there's quite a lot of people do live on them, and fair play to them, um, and it's a great thing, I, s I suppose, if that's what floats your boat, basically. But I don't think it's for me, and certainly not for Christine. She would like to, well, she just w wouldn't want to do it at all. Not unless we could get all the grandkids on at once. See what I mean about the wind? I'll have to turn it down a bit.
There are matters in front of us here. Well, it's not so much a tip this, this is me getting excited. Um, well, I, I hope I am, because... Um, well, they're from Norfolk, these two guys, aren't they? The Norfolk crew. I'm, I'm apparently now an honorary member of the Norfolk crew. Um, I'm not too sure if it's like the Mafia or anything, but... Um, now, Matt said... And I was a bit worried at first until I worked out what he meant. I thought it might have been a euthanism or something or other. He said he's going to take me up the thorn. And um, I thought, ooh, that could be painful. But apparently, what they're going to do, these two guys, if we can get it arranged, um, and if we can, it'll be absolutely fantastic. But we're, Matt's going to take us under Potter Iron Bridge in his boat. See his little boat here? Now, Matt is seen on Daniel's, one of Daniel's boats. And I, Come on, Daniel, you'll have to tell us which one it is. I can't exactly remember. Um, is it part day? Oh, God, which one is it? Well, he was at Potterayam, and Matt goes under the bridge. Now, Matt's going to take himself and Christine, hopefully, and Murray, on the 25th of July this year, up under the bridge and up to Martham and Ickling and possibly, well, we might call it the Pleasure Boat. The Pleasure Boat Inn. I've only ever been in there once, and that was when me and Christine had a drive, uh, when the boat was having a new cooker. Uh, so yeah, so that's not a tip for you, but hopefully it'll come off and I'll get some great footage up there. And then, if we can arrange it, Matt's mum lives up on one of the Trinity Broads, and she has a little boat, and he's going to take us on that as well, so that should be fantastic. Now, the wind, hmm. well, it's going to get worse as we get onto the main river. So, like I say, I'm going to either have to do a lot of talking or a lot of music because this is another hour and a half. And I don't think I'm going to cut any out because it just makes it a bit easier for me to edit it, really. In a previous video I mentioned about giving way when he was coming out on out of a channel onto a main river. And I'd seen this boat coming down here and I, he was only going pretty slow so I thought oh plenty of time to get out there. But you've just got to be wary because sometimes they are whizzing down so there was no problem there. Um, I didn't have to stop or wait for them to go past. And off we pop. My favorite place to be is right here Not thinking about what brings me down, yeah My favorite way to be without fear Is in the now, I'm learning how Fast like no thanks, no I'm Doing just fine, one foot in another Floating, enjoying my freedom Seeing off I like it better when I'm under the sun Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm under the sun Ooh, 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 ooh. My soul will tell me what I need to know Where to go, go with the flow Open sky, never on my
Turn the sun up a little bit there as I was listening to that myself because it reminded me that Matt and Murray they said that they will teach me how to sail. Well, good luck with that, lads. And now Matt reckons it's not as difficult as I make it out to be. I've uh, well, we I've just already mentioned the hunter's yard when we went on with the the skipper who took us down almost to Acle Bridge, and um, I ended up just getting us in the reeds and he had to sort of wiggle the rudder about a bit to get us out to catch a bit of breeze mm. and then um, a couple of years ago I tried well um, the Nancy Oldfield Trust at Neatstead they were asking for volunteers for instructors because they're doing an instructors course so they wanted people with different levels of expertise uh, well basically they wanted novices so that these instructors could teach you uh, and they would be assessed uh, on the day by somebody who was in the boat with us assessing how they taught us how to sail a, a sailing boat oh, I hope I would be my instructor passed because I was useless he says uh, I want you to aim for that flag over there can you see that flag over there the other side of Barn Broad yeah well I want you to get us over to there so I just put headed in that direction and well didn't work did it um, there's all sorts of things you've got to think about where the winds are going look at that thing above what's it called birdie or something oh it did me head in so yeah good luck to Martin and Murray if they do if we get a chance to have a try of that I think I'll make sure it's a nice warm day and I've got my shorts on um, so any of you who can sail is it as hard as I'm making it out? Or is it as easy as Matt's making it out? Let us know in the comments. I'm quickly changing the subject. Um, I think I was just switching my other camera on there. Um, while I've been doing this series of videos, I've sort of not had much chance to look at all the other videos that have been put up there. And there's been quite a few of them. Um, Andy Allen. Norfolk Balty man, he put a series up and I've just watched the first one. I had, I was thinking when's he going to do the next one but I think he's put them all up. I think there's seven in his series when he was there in May. Um, John Shersby, well it's Shers and Linz. Um, I think that might be well, his web channel I think is DJ Shers and Linz, something like that. Uh, He's done a full week in sort of 40 minutes, which and I think that's a really good one that he's done. Um, and they've got a new crew member, Joe the Greyhound, I think he is. Um, and there's Daniel, who's just put up last night part two of day three. So, go on, Daniel, let's get the rest up. So, yeah, once you finish watching this wonderful video, pop over to their channels. Um, it's not competition, we're all in it together. Just trying to do entertain ourselves and other people, basically.
speed. When we used to my boats, we used to always try to get a dinghy because we always had the kids with us, so it's great fun for the kids. Now, with dinghies, they're only tied onto the back, um, as you can see there. Sometimes, if they don't tie them on properly, they might come off, and we will see a little bit about that in a bit. If you've watched the original video that I did. Um, on day 5 it would have been of the April 2021 uh, it shows, well we'll probably see it here if the camera is still rolling when we get there it will p still show the rescue mission Well, as you can no doubt tell by the sound, the wind has dropped slightly and it was turning to a lovely day. This was on the Friday, the 15th, 16th of April. Um, no, it wasn't. Yes, it was the 16th of April. And on the Saturday, when Daniel was coming along to take over the reins, basically, so to speak, not on Silver Cloud, he was on Briggs Alcor from uh, Barnes at Roxham. Well, typical, the weather was even nicer. Uh, still a bit chilly at night, but uh, well, look at it, it's gorgeous, isn't it?
machines on the left here are cockshoot dyke and if you look on Google Earth well they spelt the spelled D-I-K-E for some reason but you can just see at the top of the picture where the boat is moored in the dyke there or you can walk down the dyke on a boardwalk all the way to the broad on the, well you can once Covid restrictions are fully lifted because at the moment the boardwalk is closed off because it's not a two way system really it's the same way out as it is in so hopefully once restrictions are lifted then you'll be able to go down to the broad, go in the bird eyed and have a look, take your binoculars down and have a look at the wildlife. Now we're very very close to our own moorings here which um, we'll be going past very shortly. Coming up on our right is the entrance to our marina, which is now Awning Pleasure Craft. Um, Clive Richardson is running this now, it's in separate to Richardson's at Stalham. And they have got three or maybe four hire boats at the moment, they're getting a couple more. Um, now, the thing is, hire boats can't go in there like they can at other boat yards because there's just not enough room. There's a lot of private boats. I believe they have put planning permission in to have, well, there's a, if you've seen my videos going in and coming out of that dike, there's a decrepit old building that looks like the river's going to claim it at any time now. They have put planning permission in to extend the marina down there, and I think they're hoping to get a few more hire boats in. Uh, but yeah, you can hire one, hire boats from there, so check that out online, Awning Pleasure Craft, and obviously you've got a ferry marina. We've hired a lodge in Ferry Marina for February next year and we'll be using Silver Cloud as a day boat again. Now this is very interesting and um, see this woman here on this boat. I'm not sure if you can see her. She's got her hand up as though she's trying to stop the river traffic from coming up. Now I don't know why she thought that. She's on a private boat. She don't, I don't know. Um, she hasn't got the right, well, he hasn't got the right away, or they haven't got the right away coming out of that dike, and she's got her hand up there. There's a few boats behind us. So, I have no idea what she'd be doing. Where was I? But Ferry Marina, they're doing an all inclusive deal where you don't get any fuel back, any money back on the fuel. Um, and I think somebody else has started to do that as well. But I'm not 100% sure on that. You can um, let me know if you know who it is. And um, then you've got the ferry in, just round the corner. And they do charge to moor there, but you can't book a mooring, or you couldn't, when I was there in April. And Gus of the New Inn firm now works at the ferry inn. Well, like I say, things are subject to change. You never know with Gus. Uh, he, he, the last time I saw him before this April was <laughs> next door to us and we was at the Hansel Lodge a bit farther up and he was on the new build at the side helping to build it but yeah so in April when we came down he was in here or around the bank in here helping people mooring up doing what he used to do at the new inn and I do believe that the new inn because they're under new management they was trying to See if he could come back now, I don't know if they managed to contact him or not. And you've got moorings on the other side uh, of the river, 
At one point, Ferry Inn leased the moorings from Woodbaswick Estates and that moorings Woodbaswick Fen and they put parking meters on. Now, I'm not sure if that arrangement is still going. I don't, can't recall ever seeing them for a, a long, long time. So drop a line in the comments if you know better than I do about that one. I can't see any as we go up, but you never know. And you can walk from here down to Ramworth, if you so wish. And on the other side of the river, back at the Ferry Inn. Uh, they do have parts of the mornings just for day boats during the day. Up till five o'clock, I think. Um, and they do the same thing, I think, at the Swan Inn. Now, the new inn, which is our next pub on the way up, you can book more inns there, and as long as you're eating in the establishment. And I've not been inside a pub in the Broads yet, and that's so uh, anybody who's fortunate to be there now or since May the 17th, how's it been? It was a sunny day when you knocked upon my door Oh, I got a different kind of feeling The kind I never had before I thought this was quite the coincidence Then you blushed And I felt my cheeks flush as well What a perfect, what a perfect way to spend the day Just dreaming from the other way, which we're not obviously, um, and you've got your boat from Roxham. Well, you go through Roxham village and you're thinking, or Ofton, and you're thinking, well, this is lovely. And then you come down to Arning and you think, oh, this is lovely as well. So if it's your first time on this stretch of river, uh, it is a lovely, lovely stretch. Now, pretty shortly we'll be coming up to the new inn, where, like I've said, you can book mornings. Now, as far as I'm aware, which I've said in another video, uh, the new inn, the Roxham Hotel, are the only places on this stretch of the river where you can book a mooring. Uh, in fact, the only other one I know of is Pedro's down at Akel. Um, yep, yeah, so we'll be coming up there very, very shortly. Might just have enough time to put a bit more music on.
it is in one of the emails somewhere. I think I, I think the toilets are open, but the showers aren't. I think something like that. Now, depending on how many times you actually go, you may need to have a pump out midweek, or especially beyond two weeks. Now, in Arning here, on the right, we're just about to pass South Gates, which is a fairly easy one for you to pull into. Bolters, which was at the side of Ferry Marina down there where the strange lady was trying to stop the river traffic. Well, that one's a little bit on the tight side, getting in and out, and if you haven't got bow thrusters and you're inexperienced, this is probably your best bet. Now, like I say, you should be okay just for a week, but if you're on longer and if you have to use the toilet a lot and you do need pump outs, then you will get a charge unless you go back to your own boatyard. I mean, whatever he wants to do, that's fine, but I just don't know how he manages to get in all the time. Uh, so we're going past the Swan Inn, but I think the last I heard it was £20 to more there, a few complaints about that, and the Southern Comfort, which has just started going back out again on day trips. And <coughs> I have a video somewhere that the new little blighters in about the web today. of going through my own <coughs> regatta. Now, the other day I mentioned the Thurn regatta, this one, and this one was a lot busier. So if I remember, I shall put a link to that at the end. If you haven't already seen it, you can watch that. And I always say that when we're coming down the other way from rocks and down this end to Arning, that this is really the only actual corner you come to. It actually looks like a corner in the river. The rest of the places, the bends, aren't they? But this is a—it's an actual corner. Like the key heading sort of is at a right angle.
After your lovely little trip through Arning, on your right after all the buildings is the entrance to Black Horse Broad, often Little Broad. Now I've put the sign up here for you to have a look because you can't actually see as we go past. Now it's not open all year, it's open from Easter Saturday for one week and from Spring Bank Holiday which is the one at the end of May uh, until the 31st of October. Now it's well worth a little trip round there. You can't moor anywhere, you can drop your mud weight but uh, you don't think you're allowed to fish. Well that says fishing and shooting reserved. So yeah. Um, I'm not too sure about that actually, the fishing from your boat. I don't know whether you're allowed to do that. But it's a nice little cruise around there. There's some lovely properties up on the hillside. And it'll take you about 10-15 minutes to go right around it. And so it's like I say, it's well worth it. I like going around.
Well, here's something that you don't see every day on the broads, a mid-river dinghy rescue. Now, the boats that went past us earlier on, one of the dinghies has come adrift off the back of the boat. I have said about making sure they tie it on. And they're trying to catch it there, I think. I can't really see properly. You know, Matt is heading in towards it. Matt, who's... There's two boats in front of us. Murray to the right, Matt to the left. Murray goes round the outside and um, or on the inside should I say just loitering there and Matt grabs hold of it uh, at this point I try to get my other camera out so, I'll, uh, so I could follow it a bit closer but so yeah so drama on the ICs not quite but Do you remember me talking about overtaking people on the inside? Well, it, we've got coming up a good example of it, really. Now, not this one, because at this moment in time, I've asked Christine to just keep hold of the steering wheel and just loiter um, as best you can, because I wanted to get another the camera out. Um, but Moon Voyager here has no idea that we're there, the skipper who's at the helm. Um, so this is where Christine's now just holding station, basically, while I'm sorting out the camera. Now, when, once Moon Voyager's gone, I come back to the Elm, and the only place I can go from here is on the inside, following Moon Voyager, as Matt is on the other side, trying to sort out where this dinghy needs to be returned to. So, the only place we can go is to follow Moon Voyager. Now, the skipper on Monaco, he's looking to see what Matt's talking about, and trying to sort out the dinghy, like I say. And we are going, trying to go past him, and his front end is drifting this way. So I give him a shout to let him know, uh, and he doesn't hear us. One of his crew tells him. But we just managed to get through. So me, the point being is, if you are going to go past somebody on the inside, you need to let them know because they won't see you. And whilst the three boats regrouped, we continued. It was our turn to do the overtaking now. And we follow Matt and Murray up to Salis Broad, where Matt stopped off to have a word with Eddie, the ice cream man. So, did you know there was an ice cream man knocking about on the broads? He loiters around Salo, so he goes to Salo Spit and he'll come into the broad, give you more dirt. And, um, then we carried on, we just pulled in for a short while at Salos, but I might just skip that little bit. We carried on up to Roxham.
Salop's Broad, well the entrance to it, or one of the entrances to it. Now if you go up that channel to the left there, that'll take you to the Broad, and straight ahead where Moon Voyager is, or was it Monaco that was past us again, that is Salop's Island. Now let's have a quick look at um, Google Earth again, well, Mary goes the wrong way. <laughs> so, right, so straight smack bang in the middle is an island. 
so we can work that one out. That's Salem's Island. And you can see when the boats are moored down towards the right, and then a little bit farther around, there's a bit of a beach area where you can go eat dinghies from. The dogs can go swimming, in fact, kids go swimming from there. Then there's another mooring area uh, where there's a few boats moored. Now, a little place which a lot of people don't really know about is right at the other end where that one boat on its own moored up at the tree. Um, there's, a, there's a moor in there, I can't remember exactly how many boats, but you can't get a lot in there. And the bit on the river side, which you'll see us come to in a moment, where Matt goes to see the ice cream man, is called Sallow Spit. Now there is a charge to moor at Sallow's Broad. The only three moorings is if you mud weight. On the island, the spit, and the stern on moorings, it's two pound if you're there for less than an hour, and it's five pound if you're there during the day uh, for more than an hour. And it's ten pound if you're there overnight. Now, there's no facilities. For, you can see little mooring posts there on the island, and we're coming up now to Sallow Spit. There's no facilities on these moorings. If you want water, you can go and get it from if there's room to get in from the moorings in the broad. But if you want a bit of peace and quiet, and you come to these moorings, bear in mind it is still going to cost you ten pound to moor. Now you can pay online if you can't find a ranger, if you so wish, and if you go to their website, I'll put a link in the description to Sallow Sparrow's website, there is a link there that you can pay online. So, well we're just going to pull in a bit farther up. Actually we're not at Sallow Spit, sorry this is, um, there's no moorings here, we're not quite there yet. Um, you'll see when we come to the moorings on the left bank in that is Sallow Spit and that is where the ice cream man is and I don't think we've ever had an ice cream from him I can't remember doing I think the kids did once he's been going a while Where are you? Let's get the steering wheel in a minute. Steering wheel in a minute. So these are the moorings for Salev Spit. Now we were just coming in, we, uh, we wasn't, sh well I wasn't sure at this present moment in time what, what we was doing, why we were stopping. And it turned out that Matt just wanted to, like I've said, just wanted to go and see the ice cream man. So once we found out that that's what it was, we decided we would crack on because we didn't think we'd get under the bridge at Roxham. So the whole idea of our cruise was to go up to Roxham, turn around and come back down to Awning. Um, well, actually, further than Arning, which we did. 
Uh, so we're just mooring up here and it's only a couple of minutes and then Matt comes along and pushes us off and uh, we set off again for Roxham. Behind the lovely worry is the bridge marker. Now I think it says six nine. I can't remember exactly, but I think it's on six 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 nine. So we weren't going to chance it because tide was coming in. It'd have been even worse getting back through afterwards. So we just left it and turned around it a bit, as you will see.
Well, there's good moorings on the other side of the bridge. Now it's whether you can get on the other side of the bridge. If you're in an higher boat, you can moor in the Barnes Brinkcraft boatyard. And you can moor in Norbert Broad's direct boatyard. And Furcraft Loins, whichever they like to be called. Uh, Furcraft Loins have a no private boat policy. That's blanket. They just won't let you in. Um, in fact, well, that was a couple of years ago now, I won't go into that story. Um, you can moor at the Roxham Motel for a charge, which is redeemable on food. And if you're in the winter months, like we was in yeah. February, uh, to, ooh, to walk. Which, which year would that be? Well, it wasn't this year. It'd be last year. And the I asked how much it was. We moored outside the hotel and went in. And I asked how much we owed them for the morning fee. He said it's £15 but if you spend £20 it's free. So well there was me, my brother Jeff and brother-in-law Carl waiting for the girls to do some shopping so £20. Well we did that before the girls got back. Um, yeah so you can moor, well bands actually allow private uh, mooring uh, at a cost and that's really it for if you're a private boat, boater, you, you've got for um, Barnes Brinkcraft or Roxham Motel. That's about it really. If you can't get under the bridge. So like I said earlier, we wasn't going to chance it. We probably could have scored under. I've, I've been under it before and it was 6 foot 9. But the idea was we were just having a really long cruise. We wasn't planning on stopping at Roxham. But we're not stopping on Got plenty of beers left on the boat to drink. See, I was just thinking there, you see, before that. And that's come on. But, um, we've got to set up, it's supposed to open up tomorrow. Turn it round.
Yeah, we'll see you later. And as I confirm with Matt, uh, it's 6 9 on the bridge and this uh -huh. range, well, I see you later to Murray. Yeah. I've arranged to meet them in the uh, well, outside the ferry and we'll say goodbye for this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we are down again at the end of July, well, 24th of July in an apartment at Herbert Woods. And we have got a day boat and I'm hoping to get out with Matt and Murray. So I'm hoping to get quite a bit of filming on the other side of Potter Iron Bridge. And then we're on Silver Cloud on the 31st of July and the plan then is to head down south. So if people like me to carry on doing the beginner's guides then I will. Um, could be quite interesting for people that are thinking of going over bread and water. So let's see what happens with that one. Thanks for watching and if you haven't already subscribed then please subscribe, give it a like or a dislike if you didn't like it and leave me a comment.